in today's video, I'm going to talk about something that we got from our IMO. It's a self-grading rubric. Uh, I want to talk about this call where I made over $1,000 in 15 minutes and that lead I paid $2.59 for on Facebook because I know you guys are going to ask. Um, just kind of piggyback off the last video that uh, that we went over, you know, 2023 Facebook lead update. Are they still working? Yeah, I'd pretty much say so. Um, the reason why I'm doing this video is because it's very tough to coach yourself out of sales if you don't have the support that you need in this business, in this industry, right? So a lot of us are going from being an employee from another company who's responsible for coaching you to produce revenue a lot of the times a lot of us are sales reps right coming from a sales background so going from a employee to self-employed it's a big big switch okay we're not quite business owners until you hire employees and you're able to step away from the business without being punished that's my motto at least my definition of a business owner if I can take a day or two off without being punished uh, in business, then I can call myself a business owner, right? So you're self-employed. It's a little bit different because you are the hamster on the wheel that turns the wheel around, right? So it's important when that wheel gets stuck that we know the right kind of grease to use to get it unstuck and keep that money spitting out. You understand? So what I'm gonna go over, um, you guys don't need this exact document. In fact, um, I'm just gonna share with you the original document that I have for my IMO. I actually recreated it, made it a little bit different. I wanna show you guys the same exact call. It's not gonna be the entire call, okay? The entire call was 15 minutes, believe it or not. From open, never talked to the guy before, to the close, where we get banking information, right? We underwrite the application, submit it to the carrier, all under 15 minutes. I chopped it up because only five of that was pitching. Um, this was a laydown, so I do want to grade it, and I'm going to show you guys exactly what I mean here in just a second. But just to give you an idea, this is what the document looks like. Okay, digital BGA. If you don't know, you should know already. That is the IMO that I'm contracted with, and they provide great resources, just like the one you're looking at right now. Um, here's the thing if you guys have experience in other sales jobs and maybe you guys have better questions that you would coach your agents with um, Then rewrite the document. Okay, listen, this is gonna be your business at the end of the day and ultimately Unless you plan on running on that hamster wheel for five plus years by yourself Okay uh, Then you can you know what you want to do is just create these questions in a, in a way that you would want to ask someone who's going to replace you okay so someone's going to replace you and they're saying hey anthony man i'm getting stuck i'm not making any sales what kind of questions would you put on this document to coach them with okay so there's other ways um that you can implement you know stuff like this into your business when planning ahead for a future if you want to be a business owner hey look i know you guys are independent some of you guys just want to take control of your time and that's totally fine. Maybe some of you guys don't necessarily want to build and scale a huge agency. And that's the beauty of our industry is you don't have to. Man, I got some people that I help out, you know, and they just like to travel. They just go and they, they write enough business to qualify for these carrier incentive trips. And sayonara, they're gone. And they're writing business overseas or, you know, in the islands. Um, all expenses paid for trips by these carriers. So if that's you, great, wonderful. You maybe not maybe you don't need this okay um, but this is gonna be a great you know SOP for a lot of you guys who want to eventually build out a team and have that uh, have part of this as your system because you will need a some sort of you know grading rubric and it, and it will need to be done at least once a week so that you're crossing your T's and dotting your I's and helping out these new agents that are coming on especially yourself okay again I'm, I'm just gonna say this again because it's that important it's extremely hard to it's extremely hard to coach yourself out of a rut and the best way to do that that I have found is find a sale replay that sale just grade it grade it okay so let's go ahead and play the and I redacted most of this information here but let's go ahead and play the call hello hey yeah 
Good morning. This is Anthony Patton. I was actually just getting back to you about the more affordable life insurance premiums that you inquired about. How's it going today? Uh, I'm fine. How are you? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. So I do want to interrupt for just a second. Anyone who's um, curious about the script that I'm using, this is all verbatim. Okay, I take the guesswork out of it. We read a script. Um, in the beginning, it said something about more affordable premiums. All of my introductions match my lead source. All of my introductions match my lead source. So I got this lead from Facebook and I created my ad to say, would you like more affordable premiums? I noticed that when I use different verbiage than what is in my advertisement, a lot of the times my clients do not know what the hell I'm talking about. Okay, so make sure your introductions are matching the advertisement that your client is seeing. If it says final expense, state approved, regulated burial program, right? That's what you need to say. I don't say shit like that. It's misleading. I don't. I say more affordable premiums. I'm straight up with it, right? I don't want any surprises. Burial coverage, hey, look, they're all whole life, right? You guys know what I'm talking about. Monday morning, so can't wait to uh, get started here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm a licensed agent in the state of Tennessee. Um, are you still in Tennessee? Yeah. Okay, got it. So yeah, I mean, we specialize in uh, helping folks who are on a fixed income, you know, social security, disability, that kind of deal. Um, do you have, is it a term policy that you have now or a whole life? Um, I really don't know, to be honest. Not sure, okay. Do you have life insurance coverage already or just kind of looking around? I'm kind of looking around. Okay, yeah. So what these plans do, and uh, obviously feel free to interrupt, uh, you know, if you have any questions, but they're really just designed for people between the ages of 50 and 89 who want to make sure that any final expenses are completely paid for. So with that being said, you know, these are going to be whole life insurance policies. Um, they last your entire life. They never expire, never go up in price. Okay. It's not like the stuff you see on TV. No, no globe life, no colonial pin, none of that. Okay. Uh, yeah, no medical exams either. So a lot of my clients appreciate that. Now, as far as uh, who's going to be picking up any pieces or tying any loose ends after you pass? Uh, it'd be between my brother and my nephew. Got it. Okay. And as far as the um, casket or cremation, did you have a preference uh, for quotes? Uh, yeah. Oh, I will be buried. Buried. I'm not being cremated. <laughs> hey, I'm right there with you. <laughs> Um, all right, perfect. So we'll take a look at a couple of different quotes. Um, in Tennessee, a casket funeral can range between eight and twelve thousand, um, but I mean you can look up to forty thousand if you know if you wanted some more. So the way uh, that... now I have a, about fifteen is what I'm looking at. About fifteen, okay. Yes. <clears throat> perfect. And how'd you come up with that number? Just curious. Uh, because I've been uh. Uh, I, I buried my mother, and when I buried her, I, it was like 10. Yeah. So I figured I had about five to that. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know your stuff. I mean, that's, you know, especially with inflation coming around. I mean, it's, you, you know what that looks like. So it's ridiculous these days, man. Like, eggs are like 10 bucks. <laughs> like, what in the world? Right. You know? Um, all right, cool. So the way that life insurance works is it's based on your health and your lifestyle. So I do have a couple of quick questions here. Nothing too crazy. Um, but what is your date of birth? Nine. And then what is your height and weight, if you had to guess? Uh, my height is 5'4". My weight's 125. And do you smoke any cigarettes at all? No, sir. Good deal. Okay. Any heart attacks, cancer, or strokes in the past five years? No, sir. Do you have diabetes? No, sir. Oh, man, you're in good shape. <laughs> That's awesome. Only thing I suffer with is migraines sometimes. Migraines? Yes. Okay, got it. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. I know that can be tough. My cousin has the migraines, and, you know, it's like a really big deal for him. So I know it's yeah. hard for him to, to control. Do you take, like, a, like any medications for it or just kind of have Yes. It? Yes. Okay. So I'm looking. So while I'm going through right these questions i know some of you guys are probably wondering 
all of these health questions are also in the script, okay? You guys should have a script that lays these, these questions out verbatim, literally verbatim. Anytime I veer away from the script, I notice a declination in my sales rates. Why? Because what I've made here is just a culmination of the years of experience I have in sales, plus what my IMO taught me about insurance sales, all bundled into a good script, okay? Because when you listen to enough calls, you hear what works, and you just stick with the same thing. Take the guesswork out of it, okay? So while I'm doing this, I'm asking his date of birth. You guys should all have FEX toolkits. Um, you guys should all be, you know, be able to log in and, and put the, you know, put the health conditions here, the date of birth, how much coverage the person wants, a male, female, Tennessee. Okay, so I'm asking these questions proactively. I'm typing that information into my toolkit here. At the end, I'm gonna hit get quote once I finish off these health questions and I'm gonna go with the best price plan first, nine times out of 10. You know, at about 13 different companies, what my system does is it just compares all the policy options um, in Tennessee. Now it goes by the best price plan first. And then if you have like a spe you know, specific company in mind, uh, we can look at them, but it just goes by the price, the best price first. So um, okay. out of these, Mutual of Omaha is coming back with the best price plan for you for the 15,000. Okay. And it would be $88 and 18 cents for the 15,000. Okay. Okay. Now they are also offering you the accidental rider. That just means if you pass away in an accident, it would double to 30,000 and it would only be um, like $4 more to add that rider. It would be $93 and 69 cents. Did you want to add that to this? Uh, I mean, you nah. with it. Well, no, 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 no. I, I ain't gonna give nothing that nature to all go over now. What, what was that? I said, I ain't gonna give them nothing extra to all go over now. Okay, <laughs> I got you. I was like, yeah, you're good with the 15. I mean, that's an, yeah. unless you, you know, yeah. So the way that they work um, is you do have to get approved for these plans. Now, what they do is they just check prescription history and all that good stuff. I mean, it sounds like you're in good shape. I know I can get you an approval. Um, but once they do approve you, they'll mail everything to the house. And that way you have 30 days to look it all over, make sure it is what it is. Um, and then when you get it, just give me a call. If you have any questions, you know, we'll, we'll go over everything. Is that All right. So, yeah, we're just talking about mailing the policy. That's kind of my signature close right there is because it's, it's going to address, you know, a lot of the objections that my clients are going to have when I do ask for the sale, which is, can I see it in writing? I need to talk it over with my spouse. You know, I don't make decisions alone, whatever the case is. Um, so that right there, when you tell them you're just going to mail it to them with no obligation, it actually addresses the, those objections and you won't get any objections. Nine times out of 10, that's what I've experienced. I'm a good, I'm pretty good at overcoming objections, but I'm better at not getting them at all. So that's why I use the, the mailing clothes. Now I do want to throw this in here really quick, briefly before we grade this call. Um, I offer everybody the accidental death rider. Sometimes I even tell them, hey dude, it's actually included in the plan, right? Because there's been a little bit too many times where my policies have gotten replaced because another agent told them about an accidental death rider that I never told them about. And when you look at FEX toolkits, every single one of these technically do come with an accidental death. So I just let them know, hey man, for $3 more, you could double your coverage if you pass away in an accident. Most of my clients do it because it's a no brainer. It's only $3 more a month. I mean, is that something you wanna add? Um, sometimes they say yes, sometimes they say no, but I'd say 80% of the time, they're gonna take that accidental death rider because again, it is really a no brainer. I mean, you guys should be offering this. It adds more value to the policy as well. Um, some of these guys got little accidental policies only through credit unions and banks, right? So they're able to just go ahead and cancel that and keep it all in sync with one company here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the grading. Um, of course, I'm going to be a little bit biased, right? Because it's my call. But again, um, I would use this as either a way to bounce back from uh, something that I'm, I'm having trouble with. Or I would go listen to maybe three calls that, you know, that weren't so great and go back and grade them and compare them to a, a graded call where I did like 90% or better. 
right? So you'll have both and you'll, you'll be able to tell. Um, in the notes section down here, <clears throat> what I, I would actually keep this and, you know, put the call. Like who, who was the call? What's the time of day? Where's, where's the file at, et cetera, right? So let's take a look here. What do we got? Did I open the call smiling with high volume and enthusiasm? Everybody's going to be a little bit different on the phones, but you guys know how you sound. You know how you're supposed to sound. You know what sounds good in the opening of a call. What I would what I would rewrite this to say is, did, did you open the call with the intention to make a sale? I notice that when I don't have the intention to actually sell and I just... Uh, you know, even if I'm trying to be nice and hey, man, I just want to have a conversation. I want to give this shit away if I can, right? That's still not the right intention. Your intention should be, okay, this is going to be a sale. And when I have that intention, I automatically, you know, I sound enthusiastic about talking to the, these people. So that helps me a lot. I would say, yeah, I, I did have um, pretty good enthusiasm. So did I use rapport building techniques? You know, I really didn't. I really didn't use that much rapport building techniques. I could have used a lot more. So I would say no on that one. Like things like, you know, he, he told me his brother and his nephew is going to be the beneficiary. Um, but he didn't mention kids. He didn't mention spouse. That's what I'm used to hearing. I just didn't know how to interact with that. Like, okay, does your brother live in Tennessee with you or your, or your nephew? They live with you? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, you know, stuff like that. Um, just kind of talking about their beneficiary and, and things of that nature. Like I could have even said, oh, so your brother's going to be responsible for paying for any final expenses. Is that right? And yeah, we just didn't do that in this call. Did I push through smoke screens in the opening? There really was no smoke screen. So you can just put yes. Did I listen to the client? I did listen to the client, um, but I was really more so making the client listen to me. So I don't know. I'd say yes on that because it, it wasn't a problem. Did I present the best carrier and product? I think I did. That was Mutual of Omaha. They always come in with a really good rate. Um, <clears throat> plus, it was brand recognition. When I said Mutual of Omaha, his eyes lit up. You could hear it in the call. Okay, yeah. Did I ask the client for the sale? Absolutely. We always assume. Did I attempt to overcome all objections and create urgency? I did not really create urgency. Again, it was a lay down. I don't think there was much urgency that needed to be created there. Um, but I could have made it a little bit more, you know, I, I would say, I don't know. I don't know how I would grade that one. Did I ask for referrals? No, I didn't. Typically, and yes, I am going to defend this question here. Um, I wouldn't actually put this on my questionnaire because normally yeah, I don't ask for referrals. It's too salesy for me. I, I want them to get my card in the mail, see my face, get my license number, let them get their policy. And then you can call them back once they get their policy. They're really going to appreciate that. They're going to know you're the agent that's always going to be there when they need you the most. And then you ask for the referral. Did I follow the sales script or did I go rogue at any point? We always follow the sales script nine times out of 10. When I make sales, I'm following the sales script. Now, if I didn't make the sale, I bet you the answer would be no, because I, I would probably have veered off of the script at some point. Would you have bought from you? I think I would have because my tonality was trusting um, and I, I legitimately bought from, <clears throat> bought from, I le legitimately quoted him the lowest price and I know, knowing me, I probably would have done some research and uh, historically, I've just had the best prices with these carriers. Most, again, that's why I bashed the shit out of Globe, Colonial Pen, Lincoln. Yeah, screw them guys. Straight up, I'm gonna tell you like it is, man. They rip off people, they barely pay out, okay? And sure, they have low prices, but you get what you pay for kind of deal with them. So I know that they're looking at term policies nine times out of 10. Um, and yeah, so I, I definitely think I would have bought from me. Was the sale made? Yes, I would I would say this is a C. This is a C call, even though it was a close, it was very short, it's 15 minute call in total. So there wasn't much rapport, it wasn't much urgency, but these are my dream calls literally breezing through the script no smoke screens and no objections lay down sale i love these sales and i take them all day over an a plus call where i have to overcome objections just being real just being real well, all right guys if you guys like that one make sure you hit like comment subscribe do what you got to do hit the little notification bells um, and i appreciate y'all tuning in and watching thanks